Hi, my name is Brian. I do a lot of how-to videos on how to fix cars. Uh, that's what most of my channel is about. But the reason why I do that is I like to enable people. I like to help them to be able to learn to do things for themselves. It's a great feeling. It's one of my favorites. And that's why I've learned as many things that I have, you know, in various fields. Today I'm going to show you how to do a roof on a gambrel barn. A gambrel barn is, or a gambrel roof, is a really common type structure. This is what I've come up with. Um, I've searched on the internet and there's a lot of things if you search plans it'll give you a bunch of different uh, construction builders it'll give you a bunch of different plans you can buy uh, but not much in the way of do-it-yourself or quick and easy empowerment kind of stuff and that's what I'm all about so that's what this video is um, the best way to lay one out is you want to design first of all the first thing you want to do is you want to discover what your rules and regulations are where you live where I live for a single family or two family house, you can have uh, an accessory building that's 200 square feet uh, without pulling a permit. You know, that's just a quick do-it-yourself kind of building you can do. The way that I chose to do it is I have a 16 by 12 foot structure and 16 by 12 foot comes out to 192 square feet. So I didn't have to get a permit as long as I don't do any wiring or solar panels or any of that sort of thing. So that's what I've got. So with this span here being 12 feet, you want to get a center point. I'm going to do a little bit different structure in the front than what most normal ones are. I'm going to do a skirt at the base, and then I'm also going to do some side windows. Side windows are going to look like that. So, uh, the way that you do this is you take a compass, and however this is, you divide it in half. So you do from the floor to the top, and then you put in your compass. Uh, looks like somebody's been playing with the compass. So you bring it down to whatever it is from the center to the outside wall, and then you just do an arc all the way around. Notice how it meets here. It meets at the top, it meets at this one, and then it also meets on the opposite wall, right there. So the way that you do that is you lay that out the same way on the floor of your barn. If you use the dimensions like I did, which is six feet, which is half of a 12 foot one, and it's longer than it is wide, you can lay it out on the floor of the barn. Let me show you how to do that, come on in. What I've done is I chose a straight line where I have a square line that comes out six feet. So you put a nail here, and then if you look on the end of your tape measure, it'll have a little notch for a nail head. So you put that on there, you measure out your six feet, and you put another nail. You want to be real exact, because the more exact you are, the better your layout will go. The next thing you want to do is do an arc that's out a little ways from your thing. In my case, it's about three feet, two inches. So I do a little arc this way. Come and take a look, I'll show you. you. See the arc that I have here? You want to drag your pencil, put your pencil at your tape and then drag it that way. And then you want to go to the other side. So you've got your top one, you've got that one, and then you want to do another one here. So you take your pencil, and you're not sure where it is at first, so you just do kind of a big arc, like that. And then you've got a good layout for that. And then of course, wherever your span is, the reason why you do your span this way is so that you can have it land on top. Regardless of how you plan to build your trusses, if you're going to cut a hip into them, or if you're going to have them overhang, or if you're going to have them sit right on top like I will, you want to lay it out all the same with your initial line. The next thing you want to do is you want to have nails here and there. So you have a, total, a triangle of nails and then one in the middle at the base. Next thing you do is you hook onto this one. Yeah, you want to be about foot away. So this. And then you do another arc here. And where your arcs intersect, um, you run a chalk line. You want to run a chalk line. Wait, how to do that? This is a chalk line. You put chalk in here, just powdered chalk and you shake it up and then you lay it out like this. You hook it onto your nail and then 
run it through the mark that you made where the arcs intersect and you just snap it. As you do that, it'll leave you a nice blue line. The next thing you'll want to do after you've laid that one out is you want to go to this nail and go through your arc here. You see the way that that works out. And then you just do the same for over here. You uh, do your arc from here, arc it out there, and then do the other one from the center, and then run that. And then you take your chalk line, you hook it on, and you run through your mark. Now what's fun is as you do this, your two marks, you can check if you've done a good accurate job, because if you measure from one of your arc marks, to the other, it'll equal the radius of your circle or the halfway point between where the top of your walls is. So as I measure this, remember what my measurement was from uh, there out to here, it was six feet. When I measure across these two, it's also six feet. So nice thing about this is you don't have to have a lot of math skills as far as sine and cosine, tangent. You don't have to know Sokotoa. You don't have to know any of that stuff and you'll be able to get good results on your first try. If you can trace and if you can read a tape measure and do some basic math, which means measure how wide this is and divide that by two, you can do a gamble roof. <laughs> a gamble roof has a lot of advantages. You have a lot of interior space as you lay out shelves all the way around here. It's steep enough close to the bottom where you can reach that you can put things on the shelves to get a lot of storage space for a gamble board. Um, as far as the next step you want to take, you want to take whatever you're going to use for your trusses, whether it's 2x4 or 2x6 or whatever it may be. You want to lay it down over these and you want to lay up your line so it's just on the outside as though you could trace it with a pencil. You want to trace both sides see that I've done that and then move it over to the other side and do that. If you want to change it up, say you want to do a hip cut. So what a hip cut is, is you cut a little notch into your board so that it sits on there but overhangs. For example, this one would be this way but I'm showing you on this side. If you're going to do that, the way to do this is you measure halfway down your board whether it's 2x4 or 2x6 and you make a mark like that. If you're going to do it like this, then you'll want to take that mark and you'll want to lay it on the line like this. And then also do a corresponding one. And then you want to trace that way. And what that does is it makes you go over halfway on where the top of your wall is. And you can trace out where to notch it for that. If you want to have it on the inside, you do it that way. If you want to run it on the outside and use straps to secure it, then you just lay it on the outside. And so this is wherever this is, this is your imaginary wall of what this is. Um, the next thing you want to do is however you've laid it out, I'm going to have mine sit on the wall and terminate because I'm doing a skirt. So what I do is I see where these two intersect and this gives me my angles and I trace that along the board as a straight edge or use a straight edge is even better and you make a big line so that when you lay your board down you can take your same straight edge that you use and you can mark your board where the angle is. So for example I have this line here I take the board lay it over the top and I just trace it and then I know to cut my board here and I cut it down this way and I line it up with the line of my straight line I laid out the base I trace it there and then I know to cut it here and there. Now, as you lay all these out, you can lay them out so that you can trace them to cut them. And then as you cut them, you lay them back into place and then you put your, uh, your truss joints together on there. When you do that, say for example, I'm going to use this material here. You can just lay it over that and then put it up to your nail and you can run a chalk line across this to do your first one and then do a line across from here to here if you want to do a big one I'll probably use a smaller piece but you can do it onto the board or onto cardboard and then onto a board and then you can do it from there. If you don't know how
have to know a lot about geometry to be able to do this. So, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the questions or comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Um, subscribe if you want to learn more about all kinds of things from remote control helicopters to auto repair to how to build a gambrel barn. So once you trace out all of your trusses and cut them, so I've traced and marked all of these, I've laid them out. I label mine A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So I got those all laid out. These two in mine with my measurements, it worked out to be 31 degrees here and here. And these work out to be 22 degrees. And these work out to be 15 degrees. And so that all adds up to be uh, 90 degrees per side or 180 total for all of them. Which makes sense because we go from here 180 degrees to here. Next thing you want to do is you want to live in a neighborhood where you don't have so much people dying, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, take these and I've got these cut out. They are 16 by 10 inches. You lay them on there, you staple the crap out of them in place, and then once you've stapled them, then you just run your saw buzz buzz, or you can cut them out so that they fit beforehand. It's up to you. And then you flip the whole thing over and then put them on the other side, staple the crap out of them, and then buzz buzz again. And then before you know it, you've got uh, trusses. Not fun. <laughs>